Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in our Savior's name. A special welcome to any guests and visitors we have joining us. To all of those joining us online, we're glad to have you with us. This morning as we gather, we, we follow the, we continue with the narrative. Jesus was baptized, and now he begins to call his disciples. And there's always so much interesting, that in, there's so many interesting things that happen with that that we often just kind of gloss over as we read through it. Today, so today we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus calling the disciples of John. And so we'll be looking at that today. Uh, with that, I pray God's richest blessings on you as he comes to us once again with his good gifts in word and sacrament. I invite you to rise as you are able as we join in our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. If 
we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let's take a moment for reflection upon the sins that we know and feel in our hearts and lay them before our Heavenly Father's holy throne. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who here offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship keep our family the church continually in the true faith that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace we may ever be defended by your mighty power through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever 
Please be seated. Our loving God has a plan for us from conception. Even before some would consider you human, God knew you and had a purpose in mind for your life. This is what Isaiah reflects on today in our Old Testament reading. Listen to his words. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. Now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is the opening or the address of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. A bit more extended than simply dear so-and-so, isn't it? Paul wants the people in Corinth to know how much he cares about them. He sets the letter focused upon the gospel of Jesus and gives thanks for all that he has done. Paul writes, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brothers, Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
Following the baptism of Jesus, John sends two of his disciples to join Jesus as his disciples. As they approach the Messiah, Jesus asks an important question of them. What are you seeking? Hear their answer. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and follow Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue our reading of the faith with the fifth and sixth commandments today. The fifth commandment. What does this mean? The sixth commandment. You shall not commit and what does this mean? This is most certainly true. Uh, please be seated, and at this time I would like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Sporting the blue and purple and gold. I love it. <laughs> and how's everybody doing today? Hi, Oliver. Good. Well, I'm so glad that all of you are here today. You know, it's kind of a funny thing, isn't it? If you think about it, the way in which each week we gather here on a Sunday morning, kind of cool, kind of weird, right? Why do we do that? Why is this place important? Anybody have any guesses? Oliver? We can pray to God, absolutely. Yeah, Oliver's already getting to the right answer. <laughs> well, you guys come here on Wednesdays, right? What kind of things do you guys do on Wednesdays? Oh, you guys don't. That's all right. <laughs> but I know Oliver does. And when we come here on Wednesdays, we have some fun, right? We play some games. We learn about Jesus. We do a little craft. We have some fun with friends, right? Even on Sundays, you know, after this, we have Sunday school, right? What do you guys do in Sunday school? What's that? What's that? Oh, okay. Boy, you guys aren't very talkative today. <laughs> well, that's all right. We do a lot of fun things around here. 
And you know what? Each and every one of those people out there, they love you very much. And it's pretty cool to be in a place where people love you, isn't it? But Oliver nailed the head. The real reason, the most important reason why we're here. All those other things are very good. But the very most important reason why we gather here is because this is where God promises to be. He promises to be here with us to give us, to show us his love each and every day. We gather here to praise him and to pray because of what he does for us. Here he gives us his forgiveness and love. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Would you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being here and giving us your love. Help me to never forget why this place is important. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Well, my candy stash is getting low, but I promise some more candy is coming. But I do have some for you. So we'll grab that. The rest of you, I invite you to join in our hymn of the day, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I said before, the events that transpire after the baptism of Christ when he calls his disciples are always so interesting, so fascinating when you get down to the little details. Today we look at Andrew and John. I want us to step for a moment into the shoes of John the Baptist, if indeed he wore shoes. I don't know. He was a bit of a weird guy. But I want to step into his shoes and and just kind of examine the situation from his perspective. John the Baptist was born for a singular purpose. It was a very important purpose, a purpose uh, for which his birth was rather miraculous, and it was foretold even before he was born by God. A purpose to prepare the way for the Messiah. For Jesus. It's very important to him. And so he dedicated his whole life to that. And you find him out in the wilderness eating bugs, <laughs> dressed in the most peculiar of fashion, standing in the Jordan River, baptizing those who would come and repent of their sins, and proclaiming that the Messiah is coming soon this was john's whole purpose and as we find in today's text he had followers people who were crazy enough to follow him and it's so interesting to me teachers out there your goal is for your students to always stand by your side right and completely be dependent on you until the day they die right (laughs) I could ask parents the same way, right? You want your kids completely dependent on you always, right? No. The goal is that your students, in John's case, would finally go to where they needed to be. So John baptizes Jesus. There it is proclaimed that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. Later, John is around again. You can assume in both of these instances that he has some of his disciples with him. John proclaims, This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The one of whom I have been telling you all about for years. Yet it takes a third day, a third day. And he's standing there with his disciples. And he says, look, it's the Lamb of God. Let me translate that for you. He's being too polite. Hey, knuckleheads! It's him! You've been following me so that I could teach you about him. Why don't you just go to him? Everything that John had been waiting for and preparing for was there. The students who came to him wanted to hear about that guy, the Messiah, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus, the Son of God. So John finally, finally gets it across to them. And two of his disciples go to follow Jesus, to follow that Messiah that he had been proclaiming about for so long. And as the disciples, those two disciples of John come to Jesus, Jesus turns around and is like, oh, you're here. Awesome. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? And it's this question I want us to focus on today. What are you seeking? Throughout Jesus' ministry, I'm sure he wondered this a lot. As people came to him to trap him, deceive him, to wonder about him and ask him questions, seeing him as a good teacher, wanting miracles from him and nothing more. But some came, some came 
to learn all about the kingdom of heaven, what he was all about, and to follow after the Messiah. I imagine that that was probably some of the most delightful moments of his entire life. When he looks back at two eager gentlemen, he says, what are you seeking? They don't ask him some petty question, but they ask him, where are you staying? Where are you staying? They might as well be asking, can we come with you? Where are you staying? And Jesus promptly says, come, come and see. And I love Andrew's reaction, or uh, John's reaction to this, right? He goes, he goes immediately and finds his brother, Peter. I'm screwing that up, aren't I? Andrew. Oh my gosh, this is why memorizing is so perilous. Andrew goes and finds his brother, Simon, and says, Come, come, we found him, we've seen the Messiah, come! And Peter comes too. He becomes one of the most important leaders in the church. They weren't coming to another prophet. They weren't coming to just some preacher. They were coming to the very Son of God. And that was everything. The fact that they came to Him. And they were not turned away empty, but received God's love and forgiveness in Jesus' death and resurrection. In high school, I was one of those annoying kids. I was one of those kids who didn't study as much as I should. And yet I still got low A's and high B's. You know that, those kids? Probably frustrated the crap out of you. It made me lazy. I did what I had to through high school. I got A's, low A's and B's low A's and high B's. And I got through high school thinking, okay, this is just what you do. And I remember going to college with that same lazy, goofy attitude. And as I was going through my first year, I was allotted the way it went. I didn't really study, but I, I made it through my tests. I got decent uh, enough grades. But there was one professor who cared too much about me to let me keep on with that lifestyle. And I remember it clearly. It was halfway through my first year. I had ditched his class again because I was up playing video games the whole night before I was playing League of Legends. Stayed up the whole night, slept through his class, and I wrote a very apologetic email. And instead of just saying, oh, it's fine, no, you made your choices. Go deal with them. He said, I'd like to talk to you. So I came into his office, and we sat down to chat. And I can remember this so clearly. He said, what are you doing? I said, excuse me? He said, what are you doing with your life? You pay for this class. I am coming here to serve you. And yet you treat it as if this is just something you have to do. Something you can set aside or put away. Don't you want to gain the knowledge from this class? What is it that you want from my class? It took me a few weeks to be able to answer that question. But it helped me understand one important thing. Going through the motions wasn't what I needed to do. Going to college just because that was the thing that everybody did wasn't what I needed to do. And if I was gonna spend that money and be there, it was pretty stinking important that I learn what's going on in that class. 
I had to decide what I was seeking, what I was looking for. And that changed my whole outlook at college and as I went into my post-grad. Brings me into the hard question I ask you today. What are you seeking? Why are you here? I'm sure for some of you, your spouse encouraged you to come, or your mom and dad said you had to. I'm sure for some of you, this is just what you do. That's what your parents taught you growing up. You go to church on a Sunday. I'm sure for some of you, this fellowship, this family that you have grown into is valuable and meaningful to you. Maybe you come for the benefits of this community, to share in the, uh, the care that this community gives. Maybe you come here because you feel obligated. Or maybe you come here because this stuff matters for your life. Maybe you come here because Jesus matters for your life. You want to grow closer to him and you want to learn more about him. All of those are good reasons to come here. I don't want to shame any one of them. But the greatest reason of all is Jesus. When we gather here, God meets us here with his love through his good gifts. And word and sacrament in his very presence in this place. God meets us here with his love and mercy. That's why we don't sleep in on a Sunday morning. Instead, we come here to receive the comfort and peace that comes from his amazing word, to receive his good gifts in word and sacrament, to know the love of God in everything that we say and do. I hope that's your purpose here. And I hope that you continue to wrestle with that question. What exactly do you seek from your time here at Redemption? From your faith. And I encourage you to chase those goals. Because like the disciples, when he comes here, when they came to him, they weren't sent away empty. But Christ Jesus fulfilled every need for body and soul. Just as he does for us today. Forgiveness, life, and salvation are yours in this place because of who Jesus is. And that makes all the difference. Like John, I'm just the messenger. If you're here for my mediocre sermons, or for our wonderful discussions in Bible study, I encourage you to look beyond them. Don't come here for the messenger. Don't even come here for the place, but come here for God's good gifts. Amen. Having reflected upon the word of God together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Answer us according to your promises and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you formed your son in the womb of your servant Mary to be the light for nations. Preserve that light among your peoples. Gather us around your word and sacraments, enlighten and strengthen us by your grace, and grant that we might reflect the light of Christ to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. God of glory, the heavens declare your handiwork, and each day and night testify to your majesty. Bless all teachers and students, that in their explorations of the arts and sciences, they may see your creativity 
and glorify you, Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you watched over the tribes of Jacob, providing the, both daily bread and redemption in abundant measure. Watch over the homes of your people. Bless them with all they need for this body and life and preserve them in the glad confidence that Christ is their strength and their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, your son consented to be the servant of rulers, to be abhorred by the nations so that he might redeem the world. Fortify all in authority with courage and wisdom to govern justly and cultivate penitent hearts among them so that they may gladly prostrate themselves before their Redeemer on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, your Son became the Lamb of God to take away all of our sins and infirmities by his death and resurrection. Remember all who are in need of your help and healing. We pray especially today for the family of Ellen Engerbrecht, Karen Smith, Hake Young Thompson, Sam Haben, Bridget Broads, Stan and Mary Kirschbaum, William Harrell, Andrew Burt, Julie Rivard, Vicki Wheeler, Carol Johnson, Monica, Marilyn Hubmer, Clarence Gosowich, Sherry Hagen, Thomas Smith, Judy Nybeck, Brad Linney, and for Roman and Vincent. Deliver them according to your merciful will and preserve them in the certainty that their sins are taken away. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, John the Baptist first revealed your incarnate Son as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and foretold his victory over sin by the sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Prepare the hearts of all who receive the same body and blood of our resurrected Savior this day, that they would welcome him in repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant that we who have celebrated the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ may die to sin and rise to new life, that we may treasure up and ponder in our own hearts the, the Christ announced by your forerunner. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
rise and return thanks to our God for the mighty deed he has done here today. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have so faithfully nourished us with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and kept us in the communion of this congregation. Bless, protect, and defend us as we depart to home and work. Preserve us against unbelief, division, and conflict that our fellowship may be marked with compassion, kindness, and forgiveness until we know at last the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. All God's people said, Amen. and the devil said, bummer, dude. <laughs> Please be seated. That's going to catch on one of these days. It's okay. <laughs> All right. A couple of quick announcements.
Quarter Life, we have our event on the 28th. I was going back and forth trying to find an event that would work for uh, everyone who was coming, and, um, and I think we did. So we're going to the Minnesota Ice Maze in Egan on the 28th from 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, the cost is $25. Um, if you plan on coming with us, please let me know by next Sunday. I need to order the tickets ahead of time, and they seem to be going pretty quick. So I want to get that um, get that ordered right away. Next Sunday, we have a congregational meeting going over our annual reports and plans for the next year. I invite you to be a part of that. That will be immediately following the service next week. Seniors are us this Thursday, January 19th. Yeah, this Thursday. Yep. Uh. They're going to see the church basement ladies. If you haven't seen them, they are awesome. They are hilarious, um, and it's a very enjoyable show. Uh, January 19th, if you are interested in that, please talk to Ann Banning. With that, I pray God's richest blessings on you. Oh, I should mention, the board has been changed. As we begin a new year, right, the most common thing for people to do is to create New Year's resolutions. Well, this year, our congregational life and I encourage you to make an additional resolution, a faith resolution, if you will, a resolution to shine the light of Christ to those around you, something that you're going to do new in this new year um, that will encourage you in the faith and show the faith that you care about so much to those around you. And so we invite you to actually take a Sharpie and write up on that board your faith resolution for the year. Share it with the rest of our redemption family uh, as we go into this new year together. With that, I pray God's richest blessings on you as you go about this week walking as a child of God. Go in his peace. Amen.